Okay, so in this video, it's similar to what you've already seen, but this time I'm going to use a mallet that I've got here. Um, I'm sure you can really see that very well. It's just a big wooden mallet. This was made for me um, by a man in a men's shed. I've had, it's had a bit of a beating over the years, and uh, it's fantastic. Um, the great thing about a, a mallet that's like this, it's rounded, it means that when you're tapping, um, it doesn't matter where you sort of tap from, you always got a rounded edge. Whereas if you've got something that's like that, it's it can just sort of slip off. But a rounded edge just sort of works really well. So if you can find something like this, uh, very, very handy. Anyway, what I wanted to show was I've got the, the V tool again. Um, let's see if I can go here. Yeah, so this V tool thing, there we go. You can see a little bit better in this video here. And I've sharpened it a little bit. Uh, I haven't gone overboard with it. Uh, but I want to show you also just what it's like to tap with the mallet. So I'm just going to get myself comfortable here, got my floor cushion. Alright, so the great thing about the mallet is that I can just, uh, all I really need to do is not put any so much pressure with my hands on the tool, I can just uh, basically steer. So I'm just, and all the, all the pressure um, is in the mallet. Slight taps. And you actually, generally, you get a better finish doing this way. So I'm thinking about going back and redoing some of that text because that was a, uh, <laughs> that wasn't very good to be honest. Got a bit, oh, I'll be excited, I guess, doing it, or and also probably a bit lazy to go out to the shed to, to get the, uh, the mallet. So I might just back this up a little bit so you can actually see me tapping the, um, the mallet. Hopefully, all right. Okay. See, so we can see that in the camera there. No, we'll move it a little bit over this way. So, here we go. So you just slight taps. Just putting a bit of pressure down onto the, the wood so it doesn't slide off. But the main thing I'm doing in my left hand is I'm steering. Um, the, uh, the chisel. A little bit awkward, this top spot here. So I have to move my hand a little bit. Right. A little bit I've missed just there. So let's go back over. Very slightly tap in there. Now you may have noticed there, I noticed when I was doing it then, it's just because it's such an awkward sort of angle. And also, I've got to say, chiseling like this on the side for me is not, not <laughs> the, the most convenient thing, but you see that this line here is um, somewhat thicker than the other ones, and the reason being was I did actually put a little bit more pressure down onto the chisel, and I was explaining that earlier that when you do that, you actually do get a, a wider line and a little bit of a deeper cut. So that's sort of what's happened there. I might go back around some of these other ones now.
So these bits over, over here, I, I did before I used the chisel. <laughs> That's when I chiseled the mallet. And uh, you can see that they're, they're pretty sloppy. So, if you've watched the previous video, I was talking about possibly going to look at some land. And I uh, called up the agent earlier today about it and uh, talked to him. And um, I don't know if that particular one's going to be what I'm looking for. It's, uh, look, it's, it's not bad. The problem is, it's, it's about half an acre. Um, that's not the problem. But <laughs> the problem is that about halfway through, or almost halfway through the property, there's a, a big power power lines that go right through it and um, which is you know not ideal and um, sort of limits you know building near them especially in Australia you know because of all the, especially where I live uh, a lot of bushfire area although most of the state's bushfire area now um, designated that way anyway um, so you can't really build under the power line directly and so you lose a bit of space to the size and the other thing is that where the views are there's actually some um, there's actually some trees that are in the way of the view, and they're not they don't look that significant. They might be able to come come down, but I did read uh, some information about that particular municipality, and that was one of the things that the, the council you do need to apply to see whether you can remove it, these trees or not. So that could be a problem if it's blocking the view. Um, so it's not great in that sense. And uh, <laughs> yes, the thing that makes me laugh too is I've, I've dealt with real estate agents uh, quite a lot over the years to do with the sort of work I used to do. And uh, even now recently looking for some land. And uh, they really are <laughs> really dishonest. You know, you can just tell the stuff they say, but uh, it reminded me of a funny story of an architect I used to work for, and uh, still do work for him now actually. And uh, he, he said um, <laughs> to these real estate agents that he, he dealt with quite a lot, I said to him, Renato, he said, I'm telling you the honest truth. And he just said to him, he said, well, what, are the, what other kind of truth is there? <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, you know, that's right, it's the real estate truth. Makes me laugh though when they they make uh, places that are in the middle of nowhere that have been on the market for years sound like it's hot property and everybody's chasing it and you think well if it's so good uh, you know why isn't it sold? Um, thing is too I've noticed that uh, in Australia at least in Victoria um, that unless you pay money generally to find out um, or how long a uh, property's been on the market, uh, it's hard to find that information out without paying. But uh, some years ago, I, I wrote myself a program that sort of does that. A bit, a bit sort of uh, cheeky, the way I've gone about it. Uh, I don't think it's exactly illegal. <laughs> uh, it's basically doing what's a program, something that uh, does what's basically called scraping the data from the real estate websites. And I found a way by really going through the websites and tracing it back. Um, how to get that information. So, uh, one of the websites, the main websites, actually got onto it and they, they did a pretty good job of blocking it. Uh, but another one, probably the main one, hasn't, which is good. Which is good because I make some revenue off that because I'll put it on the website and uh, people use it. So, let's get advertising revenue, which is good. Uh, but yeah, I, I wrote, I, look, I just really wrote it for myself initially. I thought oh, it was kind of useful. I'll make it available for other people and try and make a few dollars of it. So. Not, don't make mega bucks. <laughs> you know, it might make a, a dollar or two a day, but over a year, I guess it's not bad. You know, the website I think it cost me about I don't know. Uh, well, I've got a few websites actually, so I pay about ten dollars a month for three websites, and the yearly one, the yearly rate for the one that one I'm talking about, the real estate one, is uh, 
Oh, I think that's only like 20 bucks, 20, 30 bucks, something like that. For the domain name and stuff. It's probably get cheaper actually. Um, but it's, it's alright. I think actually I might, oh, I can't remember how much I pay because I've got a few, as I said, but uh, I've changed between different hosting companies over the years, so. Anyway, it pays for itself, that's the main thing. Plus some more. I often say to people that uh, I think that the, the, way, the best way to make money uh, is through passive income. And what I mean by that is, you know, you sort of do the work once and you just keep making money off it. So, like, you know, YouTube videos and advertising on websites and uh, I've got some software that I sell, that I've made. I've been selling that since 2004. And uh, I'm just a self-taught programmer. And... Um, yeah, that's quite good actually. Um, when I finally worked out how to automate it all, uh, that was even better. So I only occasionally get a phone call every now and then when people are having trouble setting up their software or something. But I mean, the funny thing is, most all the information they want on the on the website, uh, but nobody ever looks at that. So any time I get someone asking, I just send them straight a <laughs> straight link to it. Something to come along. I'm probably going to stop this here. I just wanted to give you an idea about how I was using the mallet. Um, and so I'll probably go back around and do some of the text again, just to uh, make it a little bit sharper. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stop here because um, it's uh, way past lunchtime and I'm, I'm very hungry. So um, yeah, if you have any questions or anything, just um, ask away and I'll keep going. Um, this pro uh, project's a work, you know, <laughs> uh, work in progress, and I just come up with a little bit of ideas as I'm going along. So. But the main thing is it's enjoyable. I'm just enjoying myself, so. And hopefully you learn something along the way too. So uh, until next video, um, hope you enjoyed.